Hey, welcome to Honest Reviews. I'm Logan, and today we are going to be looking at the full current range of Fujifilm, Instax cameras, and printers. These are the ones that shoot this instant film that you've probably seen all around. It comes in different shapes, different sizes, different patterns, and there's a lot of different cameras and printers that use it. It might seem a little overwhelming when you're trying to get into it, not sure which model's right for you. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video, so let's get to it. So really quickly again, what we're talking about here is the instant film cameras. And this is the Instax mini film. They also have Instax square, which is that like vintage Polaroid style um, format, but this is not Polaroid. Uh, and then we've got the Instax wide as well. So we've got these three different types of film. And this is the film that you print it and it slowly develops in front of your eyes. It's so much fun. And there are a lot of different ways to play with it with the different cameras and printers. All right, so we're gonna start off with the entry level cameras. And right now the one that you can still get is the Instax Mini 11. Uh, this is the entry level model. The manufactured suggested retail price is $79 US. This one is kind of on its way out because we now just have the Mini 12 as the newer model, but you still can get this one. So I do wanna to touch on it really quickly. These are the cameras that are really good for just getting into it. They, sh they shoot the Instax Mini Film, which is this stuff right here. And these are really like one button. You're just gonna push the button and you get whatever photo you get. You won't know what the photo is before it comes out. You kind of get that surprise of it developing. Um, but they're really great for just trying this out. They're great for gifts. They're great for kids. It's so easy that kids of all ages can do it. Uh, it's really simple operation. There's one button here, turns it on. You've got like diff a selfie mode, close up mode. So they're really designed for selfies as well. Uh, and then you have a shutter button here. These, these models had some little bling and stuff that you could put on it. Film goes in the back. And that's really the whole thing. That's the Mini 11, very simple camera. Uh, this version has had the eight, the nine. There's lots of versions of this camera. They kind of just change a little bit in their colors and their style, but these are great for getting started. Definitely recommend these. Okay, so that was the Mini 11, but now there's the new model. And I wanted to show you the Mini 11 just so you know it's out there. But if you're looking at getting one of these entry levels, you're really gonna want to look at the Mini 12 this is the brand new version, and you can see that there's a little bit of a design change here. So the Mini used to have more of this curve on it. We've now got some straighter lines. I like the look, um, but it's still that really like approachable, bubbly, soft kind of style here. Uh, they've got some new colorways. This is the mint green, which is a new one. And in terms of design, I think that the little adjustments actually are quite nice. You've got the viewfinder back here is looking a little flashier. You've got nice like embossing on here. It's kind of hard to see, but you've got the Instax logo. There it is there. And the front, really nice looking. There now is a twist here. So you twist this and that's how you turn it on. You twist it again to go into close-up mode and the twisting action feels really nice and it sounds really nice. Like it's a plastic camera. Let's not be, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. It's completely plastic, including the lens, but it feels really nice. It feels really well made. It's really good to hold, nice to the touch. So I've always been impressed with the Instax designs and I think the Mini 12 has a really cool new design. Other than that, Feature-wise, it's very similar. It's auto exposure, auto flash. You're just one button taking the photo. You get what you get. Um, and like I said, it has that selfie mode. So when you're in selfie mode, there is a little uh, mirror on the front of the camera here. And you just look in this mirror as you're taking your selfie and you try to get yourself in the mirror. If you can see yourself in, your, in the mirror, you'll be in the photo. Um, so it, it's designed again to make selfies really easily because the point of these cameras is to be like sharing photos with your friends and that kind of stuff. So they make that really easy. And other than that, that's all the features of the camera. The MSRP on the Mini 12 is $79.95 US 
or $99.99 Canadian. Um, and it's not like a big, it's basically the same price as the previous model. So if you're just getting one, the 12 is the one to get. In my opinion, I think the design changes are really nice. I like the upgrades. One thing to note about those cameras and often the cameras is that they typically don't come with film when you buy them. So you are gonna want to make sure you are picking up the film at the same time that you buy the cameras. Both of those two that I was talking about and a lot of these shoot with the Instax mini film. This is what the box looks like. You can buy them in bulk packs at a slightly lower rate. There's gonna be links and stuff down below for everything just so it's really easy for you to check things out. The mini film also comes in lots of different like styles and flavors. They've got hearts. Um, they've got hearts. There's some really cool new ones that have like paint splatter that's sort of iridescent and it changes from photo to photo. There's lots of really fun stuff. They're always coming out with new ones. So if you like that look, definitely check them out because it really makes it, you know, fun and joyful on a different level with the, the different frames. All right, next up, we are going to talk about the Mini 40, the next in the line in terms of the features. This one retails for 99 US or 129.99 Canadian. Roughly, it's always changing. Um, but basically this one, you can think of it as like a fancy looking version of the Mini 12. So it is still that auto exposure, auto flash. You've just got one button here. Um, the, you know, you got the one button to turn it on. So in terms of the design, it is very similar to the Mini 11 actually um, in that push button on, but it doesn't have any extra features. It just looks like that vintage camera style. So if you do not like the look of the Mini 12, but you want something that's just really, really simple, this is the one to be looking at. Um, it comes in black, but it looks really cool. It has nice design. And uh, yeah, that is the Mini 40. Okay, now we're moving on to the Mini 90. This one retails for 179 US. It's an older model, but I really like this one. It comes in brown and black, uh, but this has a lot of features and a lot of different shooting modes. And it's definitely an instant camera, but with a lot of creativity possible. So if you look on the back here, we've got all of these different buttons and we can do timers. We can change the flash. You can turn the flash off, which is one of my favorite features because I will often be shooting next to a window and there's nice light and I know there's enough light, but with the auto flash models, they'll often shoot the flash and ruin the light. Whereas with this one, you can turn that flash off and preserve the natural light. It also has macro shooting mode. It has like double exposure mode, which is a photo like this, where you're taking two different photos and merging them onto one piece of film. And there's lots of really creative stuff you can do there. Um, it has red eye flash mode, kids landscape. It's it's definitely not the direction that the instant film, like pure instant film cameras are going anymore, but it's still available and it's really fun. It also has a uh, tripod mount on the bottom here. And so it's definitely designed to kind of be that gap between the full like digital versions and the ones that don't have any creative features. This one also uses a rechargeable lithium ion battery whereas the other ones were just using some double A's. In general, it's definitely a more expensive camera. And if you're in that price point, the next camera is pretty interesting as well. Okay, so this camera we're gonna talk about next is the Mini Evo. We are still shooting that mini film, but now we have a hybrid camera. This is a digital and instant film camera. And as you can see on the back, we've got the full LCD screen there. And so what this camera can do is it can take a photo, it has an internal memory that can hold up to 45 photos, and then you can add SD cards to hold more. And you get to choose which photo you're printing based on the images on the back on the LCD. And all the previous cameras, it's just you take the butt, you press the shutter and out comes the film, right? They are purely film cameras. This one now you have that digital option of choosing which photo you're going to print, which in terms of uh, conserving your film, which is not cheap, that's a really nice feature. Then you make sure that, you know, you're not blinking in the photo when you print it. It also has a ton of features that can get, help you get really creative with the photos. 
Um, it has different film modes and different like effect modes. There's 10 of each like double exposure, monochrome, collage, light leaks. You can combine those things together. So you have all these different ways to kind of affect the look of the film. And you can do those things before you print it. So again, you have more control. In terms of the design, this camera is really nice. We have a print lever on the back here. This is how you print photos. You get to pull that. It's, you know, really giving you that old film camera feel. Uh, and it's just really satisfying to do that when you're printing. It has dials to like change different options. It really, they really wanted it to feel like a significant camera, that retro vibe. It has two shutter buttons. There's one in landscape mode and then one uh, in portrait mode, which is really nice. You know, mini film, you often shoot uh, portrait because it has the little thing at the bottom. So it just lends itself really well to portrait, but you definitely can shoot landscape. And this one makes it easy for you to do both. This one off also has the tripod mount here. You can also do remote shooting with this one with a phone app. So you can be in the photo and take the photo much easier. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff. It also has an accessory mount on the top, just tons of features in this one. Uh, it You do lose a little bit of that like surprise of not knowing what the photo is gonna look like. And so if that kind of purity of instant film shooting is important to you, you won't get that with this camera, but it has so many options. It's so fun. It really is a great, great camera to play with. And I feel like, you get a lot of different ways you can use it. You can also print photos on it through your phone. So it kind of becomes a printer as well. One neat feature of this one is that it has a really close minimum focusing distance for the macro mode. It's like 3.9 inches. So if you enjoy close-up photography and you wanna combine that with instant film, this one has the closest minimum focusing distance of any of the cameras, I believe. So uh, it can definitely do some cool stuff in that realm. So for all the different all-in-one features of this, this makes it a really great option. Um, in It's a higher price point for sure than just getting into it. But if you think you're gonna really love instant film shooting, this one would be my top recommendation. And just as a note, we have individual reviews on most of these different cameras and products. So if you wanna dig deeper, make sure to check out the rest of the channel and links below, um, because there is so much about each of these cameras. I can't say everything in this one big video. Uh, so if you wanna learn more, make sure to check the other videos out. Okay, so those cameras were all shooting that Instax mini film. Now we are stepping into Instax Square, and this is the camera that is shooting Instax Square film. This is the Instax Square SQ1. It comes in three different colors. You have a white, you have this glacier blue, and then there's a terracotta orange. In terms of design, you can see it kind of took a different direction with the design. It was less bubbly or vintage. And we've got this kind of cool modern, um, maybe mid-century modern kind of look. I really like the style of this camera. The suggested retail price on this one is $119.95 US or $159.99 Canadian, roughly around there. Um, and so here's the square film that we're talking about. These are a couple different shots with the square film. And then just to compare, there's one of the squares compared to one of the minis. So you can see that there's a lot more photo in the square. Um, and it just has that classic instant film look. So a lot of people really enjoy that. The square film does cost more than the instant mini film, just as a note. So in terms of features, this one is very similar to the mini 12. It is, you know, a basic entry level kind of camera. We have the auto exposure, we have the auto flash. Uh, we've got the twist on the front here to turn it on. We have the selfie mirror which is the same feature that they all have, um, just to make sure that you've got yourself in the frame. And then that's it, that's that's all of it. We've got, you know, standard on the back, little thumb grip here, no tripod mount on the bottom. Uh, you've got some he spots here for a neck strap, uh, but that's it. So it is a very simple model. 
Uh, right now, it's the only one that shoots square film, but there is a square film printer, which is definitely a great way to get the square film into your life. And then hopefully they'll be introducing more models, uh, maybe like a hybrid model. There used to be hybrids that shot the square film, uh, but they're not currently sold in major retailers. You might be able to find one somewhere. Uh, but the square is such a cool film. So hopefully there's going to be more to that line coming. All right, now let's move on to the final size of film and the final camera that we're going to talk about today. This is the Instax wide 300 and it shoots the Instax wide film, which is this right here. So I'm going to show you in comparison to the Instax mini, what the Instax wide is, is it is two widths of the mini. Um, and you can see that it lends itself to the horizontal shot perfectly. So if you are more of a landscape photographer, this might be the camera for you. This is personally one of the cameras that I have used the most, especially when traveling. It is a big boy for sure. It is heavy, it is large, but the size of the photos that you get just have so much more of an impact um, that I'm so glad that this is the camera and the format of film that I got to preserve those really cool shots on. Uh, so I do tend to lean towards this one as a travel landscape photographer kind of scenario. In terms of price, the wide 300 retails around 129 US or 139 Canadian. Um, so it's not as expensive as some of these, a bit more than the entry level of the mini, which makes sense. Okay, so in terms of features, this camera has a few extra functions than the entry level cameras um, that are kind of nice. In terms of turning on, we've got this power switch right here. And this camera has two different focal ranges. You've got 0 .3, 0 0.9 to three meters, and then three meters to infinity. And you can just turn this dial and it changes the focus mode. Um, so that's handy if you're shooting like a portrait close or a landscape, the camera can adjust for that. On the back here, we've got the LCD screen and we have a couple different function buttons here. This one is really handy. This is lighten and darken. So this is gonna let you adjust the exposure of the film or of the photo, either brighter or darker and the Mini 12, the SQ1, you've just got that auto exposure. Whatever the camera decides is what you're gonna get. Same with the flash, it's just gonna decide for you. Um, with this one, if you take a photo, you don't like the exposure, you can adjust it and then take the photo again. So that's a handy feature. And then we've got the flash mode here. So if you wanna make sure that the flash fires, you can turn it on just by pressing that button. The LCD is also gonna show you how many um, exposures you have left. And then at the bottom, we've got a tripod mount on this one. So again, if you're liking to use this for landscape photos or something, you have that feature. So that's this camera, not a ton of features, um, but a couple more than those really entry level ones in the mini range. This is the only camera available that is shooting uh, the wide film, this stuff again. So if you like that wide film, this is the model for you. For a very long time, it has really only been one wide film camera. Um, so much like the square, if you wanna shoot in that format, look at this guy, but there is a wide printer. So if you like the film, but you don't want to use this camera specifically, you've got another option. Okay, so that wraps up the cameras. We are looking at you know, our entry level minis. You've got the Mini 90, with a bit more features creatively, but those four cameras, the 11, the 12, the Mini 90, and the Mini 40, these are all purely film cameras shooting that mini film. Then we've got the Mini Evo. This is the one, the hybrid digital and film. This is a really cool camera um, shooting that mini, but having the option of choosing which photos you wanna print. So that makes this one quite unique in the lineup. Then we've got the Square SQ1, very basic camera, but shoots that square film if that's what you really like. And then we have the Wide 300 shooting the wide film, couple little features, big heavy camera, but can get you those really cool, like wide images that these other guys just can't do. Now let's move on to printers. And this is a range that has been newer, but 
They, we've gone through a few versions now of the printers, so they're starting to get uh, quite interesting with some of the features they have. You can see there's some different things going on here. Um, and the basic idea here is now that now we're printing photos from our smartphone onto the film. And that's just giving us a bit more um, options when it comes to using the Instax film in your life. Okay, so we're gonna start by looking at this printer right here. This is the Instax Mini Link 2. And I know it's got this funny thing on it. I'll show you, this comes right off. Um, this is a Splatoon 3 uh, accessory. So this together is like the special Splatoon edition, um, but you can just get the mini link to like this. So let's talk about it. All right. This printer retails for $99.95 US or $129.99 Canadian, roughly. It's always changing. Um, that Splatoon edition with this fun little guy on the top, um, that one I think is around $1. $59.99 Canadian, and I only saw it in Canada, so Americans, I'm not sure if you can get that one. Sorry if you can't. Uh, but this printer comes in three different colors. We've got clay white, which is this one. There's a soft pink, and there's a space blue. Um, so the printers, you can definitely choose colors to kind of customize it to your style. And what these printers do is they connect to your smartphone, you take a photo from on your smartphone, and you print it through onto the printer. The special edition one, there's also an app you can get for your Nintendo Switch, and you can print images from the game onto the printer from your Switch with an app. I did not test that whole thing, but that's kind of the reason that we've got this like gamer style one is if you are a Switch player and you wanna be printing your instant photos, you can do that. It also has like different frames and stickers and all of that. So operating these printers is very easy. You've got this button on the front. You just push that, that turns it on. Connecting it to the app is typically very simple. I've got the Instax um, mini link app here. Each of the different printers has its own kind of dedicated app. So if you have multiple printers, make sure you're getting the right app for the size of printer that you've chosen. Otherwise they won't connect. Um, and so yeah, the apps are really well designed. They've gone through multiple versions of the printers now. So it feels like they've gotten a lot of the bugs worked out. I always find it very intuitive. There's so many things you can do here. You can pick different frames uh, to put on the image itself. You can print any type of mini film in these. So if you want the ones with the fun borders, um, like these heart ones that I showed you earlier, these will all work in the printer. Uh, and then you can also do different effects on the film itself. And that's what all of this will do. One of the new features with the mini link Two is this Instax Air. So I'm gonna see if I can show you this here. Okay, so I'm in the Instax Air section. I've changed the bottom to be the printer. The LED turns on and there's this function button at the top here. It's a little bit hard to see. There's a button right here. And when the LED is here, I push the button and things happen and the printer is vibrating and making sounds and my phone is making sounds and you can doodle on a picture or you can create like augmented reality uh, text and effects and the background, like there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do and you can draw with the printer onto your phone, which is just very surprising thing to do with a printer. Um, but when I do that, it's pretty fun. It feels kind of playful and joyful and the the printer's vibrating, making sounds. Um, so it's, it's it's an interesting new feature. And I think if you let kids play with it or your friends play with it, it would, it would kind of add a little bit of extra fun to the printing process. Uh, so there's a lot to explore with these printers. There's a lot in the app that you can do to get really creative. You can change the color, you can add text, people can use them for invites. It really lets you just think outside the box in how you use that Instax film. In terms of putting the film in, very, very simple. We've just got this little switch at the back. 
opens up, pop the film in, and then on the side here, you've got a little slot for charging it, and it comes with that charging cable, uh, but not the power adapter. So that is the Instax Mini Link 2. Special edition Splatoon, if you wanna get that guy to go on top, which is pretty funny looking. You can still draw with it, as you can see, and then the film just comes at the top there. All right, so next in the printers, we have the Square Link. And so this is a printer that is gonna shoot that Instax Square film. And if you love this film, but you want a little bit more creative control than the SQ1, which is just that one button push kind of thing, this is a great option. The retail suggested price is $139.95 US or $179.95 Canadian. It comes in two colors. There's the white and then there's this midnight green, which is quite nice. Uh, it's got this kind of stripey pattern on it, which is textured. It's definitely a very sleek looking thing. Uh, I find with these printers, you can just like leave them out on a counter and it looks nice. Uh, so it doesn't, you know, it's not this big bulky eyesore in your house. You can leave it out and then you're way more likely to use it and actually do the printing. Very similar to the Mini Link 2. There is an app that you use, connect to your smartphone and you print from there. This one does not have the Instax Air LED thing, um, but it does have features that allow you to use augmented reality. Uh, the AR features. And so in the app, you can add text, you can add a background, you can add special effects and doodles. You draw on your phone for the doodles. Um, and then it will put a QR code on the photo. And then your friend can scan that or someone can scan it and see all that augmented reality in the app on their phone. A couple other features of this one, you can print from a video. So if you have a video on your phone, you can scan through and find the still frame that you wanna print and print that out, which is really cool. Um, it's got this function button right here on the front. This will reprint whatever the last photo was that you printed. So say you're printing them out for you and a friend and you just wanna double it up really easily, you just press that button. But that memory gets erased when you power the printer off. So that's really only when you're using it in that one time. And then one feature of this that's interesting that they're rolling out is um, it can work with this Instax Connect, uh, which I believe works through the app. And so you can send someone a picture with like a message like happy birthday and then they can respond to you in this instax connect through this app and say thank you and then you can print the photo with those two messages on it so it's it's sort of trying to do it well it's trying to do this like communicate with your friends and then take that and put it into a photo um, which is interesting and i see you know there might be a lot of creative ways to use that. So that's with this printer they've got in the app that Instax Connect. Really what Instax is meant to be about is connecting with people. Um, you know, their, their brand line is don't just take, give a photo, connect with people in the app, connect with people by sharing those physical prints. And that's one of the things I've always loved about Instax Film. So it's interesting to see how they're getting creative with that with the apps that they're working with now. The final one we're gonna look at here is the Instax Link Wide. So this is the printer that will print on the Instax Wide film that we've talked about. And just like the square, if you really like that Instax Wide film, but you don't wanna be shooting with the big chunky Instax Wide 300 camera, or you wanna have a bit more creative control, the printer is a really great option to look at. It retails for around 149 US or 189 Canadian. It comes in two colors, white and this gray. Uh, it technically comes with a little stand that I do not have right now. Um, but again, it's kind of meant to be able to sit out on your countertop or somewhere in your home, look nice and have you use it a lot. It's also got this sort of textured, uh, finish to it, very sleek looking as well, nice and thin, really simple operation. You've got the hinge back here to put in your film 
and then you've just got the button in the front to turn it on. Other than that, it's pretty simple. The Instax Wide Film does come in a couple different versions. You can have the white frame or this frame around the image can be all black, um, but it doesn't have all the different fancy things like the Instax Mini. So it's a pretty simple printer, uh, but if you wanna get into the wide film, it's definitely a, what you wanna look at. Okay, so when it comes to the printers, obviously the big difference here is what type of film we're using, and that's really gonna guide your choices. I find that, you know, personally, these get used a ton these days because we're much more likely to print a photo if it's very, very fast and easy versus we don't have that tradition of going to the photo lab and sending in our film and waiting for it to come back. Photos live on our phones all the time now. Having the printer or the mini Evo that allows me to print from my phone has been one of the ways that I've been doing using Instax film a ton. And in my life, I do use it a ton. Birthday parties, when friends are over, just taking quick photos. Having that physical film to give someone makes that experience so much more positive and these days unique to have a photo you're actually holding. Um, so if you're wanting to get more photos in your life and make sure you're printing your photos, definitely look at these. It's fun, it's tangible, you put them on your fridge, put them on your wall, and it just brings so much joy. And that's what I love about the instant film in general. Okay, huge review, so much stuff to talk about. I went really fast. There's a ton of details on all of these things that I wasn't able to get to. Make sure to check out the rest of the channel and the links below because we have more in-depth videos on many, many of these products and other instant film fun stuff going on. So subscribe like the video, leave me a comment, let me know which one of these cameras or printers you think is the most interesting. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next video.